I make this video today with a heavy heart filled with love for the true church of Jesus Christ, which is not a building or a denomination, but his spirit filled born from above believers who confess his lordship with their tongues as I do, not out of hatred, spite, malice, or division for that church, but because our Lord has called me to share this with you all, because he is tired of his beloved body being chopped up into tens of thousands of pieces strewn about the earth, hemorrhaging his precious blood. And his message is the same as Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Mystery Babylon will fall. Come out of her, my people. And so I hope to share with you today the journey that Christ took me on after he called me and I was born from above myself through the church and seven denominations and what he revealed to me about it all. Because brothers and sisters, we have become the modern day Pharisees, no matter the denomination. And so if you're already crucifying me in the comments, know that I love you. And I remind you that Jesus said the world would know us by our love for one another, not our hatred, vitriol, division, and theological debates where we stab each other in the heart and the back on social media. A lot of people aren't going to like or be able to hear what I'm going to say because you have a religious demon on your back even though you may be a believer and confess Christ as Lord with your tongue. Know that I picked up the same religious spirit in my journey through the church, and I pray that each and every one of you are delivered from it so that you can truly be free in Christ Jesus from all the systems and ways of this world, yoking you in heavy bondage, legalism, and pride, crushing your spirit and weighing you down. So let's go back to about two years ago when I was a new age feminist and liberal moving to a commune worshiping false gods and demons myself, who appeared to me as angels of light. At that point in time, I was so broken down, so oppressed, and frankly so possessed by the spirits I thought were God, that my entire health had fallen apart, and I had spent 16 years in vain, desperately trying to heal and transform myself by my own efforts in psychology and the new age, shamanism and the occult, that I was completely disabled, an absolute wreck of a human being with a soul deeply in bondage to the enemy in my mind, will, and emotions. I did not know that I was in bondage to Satan, who I thought was God. I was deceived. But yet there was still something in my heart that knew I was rebelling from God deep down, even when I was a budding young atheist and scientist in my early college years long ago who truly was angry at God because of the atrocities and horrors I had survived and witnessed in this world. And because frankly, I simply didn't know him. I felt absolutely drawn, called to watch a film on Netflix at the time about Mary Magdalene and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so streaming Netflix in my hippie bus with Wi-Fi, I put the film on. And in it, Jesus Christ revealed to me who he truly was, his goodness, his love, his mercy, his grace. And the scales began to fall from my eyes because for a very long time, I had mistaken him for wounded Christians, broken vessels, and the broken vessel of the institutional religious system itself that I still can see is all about power, domination, and control, the opposite of the ways that Christ called us to be in his church. If you don't believe me, flip open your Bible to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 25 with me, and let's read what Jesus said about his church. The context of this verse is that Zebedee, the mother of James and John, comes to Jesus, kneels down, and asks for her sons to have a high place in his kingdom. He tells her that she doesn't know what she asks because the cup of suffering is so great he's about to drink from. And then he turns to all of the twelve, as it says, Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, and brothers and sisters, after Christ called me and a week later, that whole commune fell apart. I had to leave and come home. 
And then he fully revealed himself to me. I gave him my entire life and he filled me with his spirit. And I instantly knew the gospel was the truth and that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He then called me through visions while fasting because I had no idea what to do next on a journey through seven denominations, which I completed some months ago and have been resting and recovering from since because it nearly destroyed me. As Paul alluded to in 2 Corinthians, working truly and serving in the kingdom of God is a death sentence, though I gratefully sacrificed my entire life for our Lord, even now. He told me I would be like an undercover Jesus freak traveling through the denominations. And like Denzel Washington in Training Day, I went too deep in every assignment, drank the Kool-Aid, and became a part of each and every congregation wholeheartedly because I desperately, as a true believer baptized in the Holy Spirit, wanted nothing more than true communion and fellowship with my brothers and sisters in God, my true family, the church, the ecclesia of God, his beloved bride, for whom all his passion and love is, so much so that he laid down his life as a sacrifice so we could be reconciled to him, to his family, and especially to his precious, pure, beautiful, immaculate heart that he revealed to me on that day and still does. The Lord gave me a precious gift. He let me that day on my knees feel his precious heart and feel the pain and suffering that we cause him. And as I traveled through each denomination from the totally modern sort of deconstructed type denomination to legalistic denominations to traditional denominations and back again to a very modern seeker-friendly church, I thought each and every church would be my spiritual home because every true believer has a longing for fellowship and communion with other members of Christ's body in which we are all one and he is our one true head. In the true body of Christ, Brother Frank Viola also describes so well in his body of work, the church itself was never meant to be headed and led by one person or a small group of people, that elders were servants in the church, not in the way that we use it today with false humility but truly humbled disciples of Christ who helped to guide and shepherd people to him so that his Holy Spirit could do his work in them producing the fruits, not through systems of authoritarian rule and power and control, which arose in the third century when the church became Romanized, known as the Roman Catholic Church. But most of us on the Protestant side think that she is Mystery Babylon, and I'm here to tell you, friends, it's every single denomination the Protestant Reformation didn't take it far enough. We never gave the power back to the believers as a whole. And every congregation sits passively on Sunday for the most part, while one person lords it over everyone else, usurping Christ's power and headship in the church. And if you think ministers are ordained by God, then why did he tear the temple veil when his work was finished on the cross? liberating us from the temple system itself, telling us the temple would be torn down stone by stone, and it was. And then we re-erected it in the 300s, moving from house churches where each one shared a teaching, each one shared a tongue, each one shared a prophecy, into a congregation of passive believers, effectively muzzled in the body of Christ. And in my humble opinion, that system is not ruled by Christ, but Satan himself. And it plays on our own flesh, our own willpower, and our own desire for authority, power, and control, the pride of the flesh, just like it did with the Pharisees, who created all sorts of doctrines, even outside of the Mosaic law, the doctrines of men, just as each and every denomination has. And as I moved through the church, I realized we aren't any different from them at all, yet every denomination says they have it all right, and the problem is the other one when really in truth, it's all of us, and our tendency to build towers of Babel with human-made bricks up to the heavens and prideful hearts. Don't get me wrong, there are true, wholehearted servants of Christ, and he uses them in every denomination because God uses broken vessels. But that doesn't mean just because he blesses a church that we are in alignment with his will. God blesses us whether or not we are aligned with his will. He blesses us out of his love for us, not our works. Even as we break his heart, breaking the church into tens of thousands of pieces, 
even as we turn away from his true vision for his beloved bride and make it all about ourselves with our doctrines of meology, all of which focus on our salvation alone and not his eternal plan and purpose for us all to be one in him through our love for one another, which cannot arise until we truly grow and mature as believers in a body of Christ that is not passive, where each member expresses his or her own gifts because God didn't just gift half the church and silence the rest based on one line of scripture we all misinterpret. A church that is truly empowered and built up in the Holy Spirit as we all reveal Jesus to one another through our gifts freely. Outside of the dominance hierarchy and the structures of this world that are man-made and ruled by Satan and his powers and principalities, not the Lord's. Did he know that we would do this? Of course. That's why there are so many warnings in the Bible. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that anyone who confesses that Christ is Lord is not saved because we're doing church wrong. But my passion is for Christ and his passion is for us. Not for power and control, not for, not for legalism, where we obsess over secondary doctrine and who's doing it right and who's getting it wrong and stab one another in the back showing the world that we truly do not love each other because we have not gone through the process of conforming ourselves to the image of Christ that comes from not trying to do good ourselves, but fully submitting and surrendering to his headship and his lordship, not the will, opinions, love, and approval of those outside of us, so that his spirit can truly transform us and bring forth its fruit, his fruit, his good works in us not for salvation, but for exhortation, for edification of his church. And brothers and sisters, most of us are still being fed on milk by the leaders of our congregations. And I was hard pressed to find many believers who truly knew God, who truly had an intimate knowledge of Christ. And he revealed to me after about the second or third fellowship when I asked him, when I saw people who were elders in the church, male elders in the church with 50 years apparently walking with Christ, unloving and corrupt. I'm not saying they're unbelievers. What I'm saying is until we truly receive his spirit fully over time and allow him to transform our hearts we remain a very immature body of Christ no matter how long our denomination has been in the world. And it's not just the fault of those people in leadership, it's all of us. Perhaps comfort to us is more important than sacrifice and we become too comfortable. Perhaps that is why he is shaking America and the West up so much right now. Because each and every denomination in my experience of the church has fallen away from the true church, the ecclesia of God, of which each and every one of us was always meant to be a priest, male or female, because Christ destroyed the Levitical priesthood when he fully fulfilled the law, or in effect, expanded it. And if you don't believe me, flip to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and read with me. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Or as is written in the book of Revelation twice, I'll just share chapter 1, verse 5. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It doesn't say only the apostles are priests. It doesn't say only men are priests. What he does say over and over and over is that we are called to love one another, that the world will know us by our love for one another. And where does that love for one another come? It comes from the work of his Holy Spirit in our hearts. And what have we done with our salvation? We have remained in our flesh and chopped up his body into tens of thousands of parts, disunified, disjointed, and disempowered. And then we wonder why people in the world don't listen to us and we're so ineffective. The Lord showed me in visions months and months ago that there is a great shaking coming to this world and his church. And the only way to withstand that is not by our own strength, but by turning to him, praying for his peace, praying for his strength, praying for him to transform every wounded, broken part of us, whether we can see it or not, the religious spirits and fleshy legalism we carry on and out in every single denomination. Yes, this time every knee will bow and everyone will know that Christ has come. 
And yet, would we know him if he came as he did the first time now as a body and congregation? I happen to think not. And I thank our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, that regardless of how far we stray from him, when we are in him, we are saved. But we also shouldn't forget about Matthew 7, where many will come to him at the throne of judgment and say, Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. And he will say to them, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. And you may be thinking, I'm so good, I obey all the laws, I will myself not to sin. And that is the definition of lawlessness, my friends, because we only are made righteous in the law by the blood of Jesus Christ. We receive when we receive his spirit. And we cannot transform our sin or overcome it without his life-giving spirit dwelling within us and without offering up those sins at the altar of his cross. And so as someone who was unwittingly formally working for Satan myself, who thought I was doing the right thing and was humbled by God, who learned that I could not transform myself with the ways of this world or even the ways of my own flesh and willpower, I admonish you, brothers and sisters, to come out of mystery Babylon in order to have true deep intimacy and fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ so we can truly have that fellowship with one another we have to spend time with him alone, not in our doctrines, not in our prescribed activities of what makes us a good Christian based on what we're told in our denominations, but by truly developing an intimate relationship with our Lord, ourselves, truly allowing him to work in us and transform us, to seek him first, remembering that Reading scripture is great every day, but the early Christians, most of them didn't have access to it and couldn't read it all. And yet they had a thriving, beautiful church in Ecclesia where the world saw they treated one another differently than it did and was mesmerized and was evangelized by the love that existed in that church. Love I was hard pressed to find in any congregation from any body of believers except a stray one here or there, a one percenter. And I speak these words strongly, but with absolute love, a spirit of gentleness that wants to call you back to Christ's heart himself, to take these things to the Lord in the secret place and ask him to reveal to you the parts of you that are walking in a religious spirit, or perhaps a spirit that thinks all sin is permissible. And I pray that he sets your hearts on fire to become his true remnant, his set apart people who are willing to die to themselves, to be born anew in him, to live for him alone, not a political party, not an educational system, not an economic system, not a nation, but the royal priesthood of all believers, a holy nation set apart, called out of this world and its systems of power, dominance, control, and subjugation that were never of our Lord. God bless you and keep you friends and may his peace rest upon you deeper than you've ever felt it before as you ponder these things in your heart. In Jesus' name, I pray this word reaches into your spiritual hearts, the new hearts of flesh that our Lord gave you when you received his spirit, and that you examine them with him, and you can be more free in Christ and his true representative in this world. Amen.